Climate change is a threat to human and planetary health. Any further delay in emissions reductions will miss a brief and rapidly closing window of opportunity to secure a livable and sustainable future for all. I am a physician scientist, age 65, and professor emeritus in health sciences at Simon Fraser University. I have specialty training in occupational and environmental medicine, and I'm certified by the U.S. Board of Medical Examiners in preventive and occupational medicine. My primary research is in the health impacts of global heating. As part of my work as a public health physician, I have been engaged in the Trans Mountain Expansion Project's impact assessment since 2014. This pipeline expansion project is a perfect example of an outdated infrastructure project that flies in the face of the promised energy transition in a climate emergency and in a stunningly beautiful yet fragile place we call home. I became an intervener in the review process addressing the health impacts of the project. I led two major reports on the health impacts of the pipeline and its associated hazards. Despite my expertise, my evidence of potential harms from this project have largely been ignored. When the project was initially considered, Prime Minister Stephen Harper ensured that climate change could not be considered as a factor in the review. Because of this prohibition, I was not allowed to include in my two reports about the most profound health impacts of the project, namely those due to climate change. We had a preview of these devastating impacts last year with over 745 climate-related deaths in BC alone. We know that the Trans Mountain Pipeline Expansion Project will worsen global heating and kill more people. We also know from government's own analysis that we cannot meet our promises to the world to reach greenhouse gas emissions targets if we complete and operationalize this expansion. We heard loud and clear earlier this year from Secretary General Guterres that we must stop building new fossil energy infrastructure to ensure a future for our children. The climate impacts of this project are not only threats to public health, in my intervener reports, we outlined the toxic effects of a diluted bitumen spill, childhood leukemia risks, toxic releases magnified by the hot summers of future climates and wildfires, along with the mental health effects, to name just a few. These health issues remain unaddressed. The modern Hippocratic Oath requires that I protect the health of my patients and the public, and that I inform or warn about impending health threats. The American Medical Association states that, quote, ethical responsibilities usually exceed legal duties. When a physician believes that a law violates ethical values or is unjust, they should work to change the law. In the exceptional circumstances of unjust laws, ethical responsibilities should supersede legal duties." End quote. I realized that scientific evidence was not going to stop the project. I began to look for other means to save lives and reduce the harm that this project was going to cause. I grew up in North Carolina during the Civil Rights Movement. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 had been in place for about 100 years when I was a kid, but blacks in the U.S. were clearly not fully emancipated citizens. Jim Crow laws prevented blacks from living in certain areas or drinking from certain fountains, attending certain schools, and voting in elections. Change did not come until many black people, and some white people as well, started taking direct action against these terrible laws. A lot of people in the civil rights movement went to jail, but they managed to end centuries of injustice in a decade or two. At about the same time I was giving up on the TMX review process, 
I was working with First Nations on health issues related to the environment, such as analyzing the chemical levels in shellfish in Burrard Inlet. I saw the direct action that First Nations were taking on Aboriginal issues and the environment. Injustices that had been going on for centuries were finally being eroded. In particular, I saw the impact that First Nation activists were having on environmental issues such as pipelines. Again, people were going to jail, but it seemed to me that what they were doing was effective and could save thousands of lives. They encouraged me and inspired me to take action myself. I have seen the strong stands taken by Tsleil-Waututh matriarch Taha, Will George, Jim Layden, and Stacy Gallagher. I have pled guilty and will be going to jail for breaching a court-ordered injunction that protects the oil industry. I appreciate that the courts must enforce the law to keep public order. However, I hope the courts appreciate that people like me must challenge laws that put lives at risk or cause serious harm. The only thing I am asking the judge is to take into consideration that I am 65 years old and have hypertension. My cardiologist is concerned that the stress of sleep deprivation and sudden loud noises could increase my risk of a heart attack. I hope the judge will find a proportionate sentence that serves the Crown's need for deterrence, but does not put my life at risk. Future generations will look back on what we did in 2022 to protect them and the planet. I can say I did everything I could. I hope you can too.